Good evening, everyone. What we're going to be doing today is looking at um, some photos from Fort Ticonderoga. They had an event called Brown's Raid that they did. At that event, I took approximately 700 photos. And we'll be looking at those and culling them down. Now, the purpose of this event, from my perspective, was to make sure that the um, you could see the depth of the work that was done and the setup and the configuration. So to give you an idea of how many photos I'll be going through, um, this is as small as the thumbnails will go. And you can see the large number of photos that I have. I take photos in a series. That is, I hold the shutter down. I take a couple of photographs in one shot. When I'm doing portraits, I usually do a few more. And that's because as somebody's standing there, it's not natural for a human being to just stand in one place. We move. We blink. We breathe. So by keeping it, uh, firing that shutter off and getting multiple shots, it helps capture the moment. And it also allows me to take out things that were inadvertent, like blinking. But... I went into this with the goal that I wanted to make sure that I could get a sense of the entire depth of the setup and all the work that the reenactors had done and that the people at the fort had done in putting this together and making this such a fantastic event. So a lot of what you're going to see is not up close shots. I wanted to capture that entire environment. Two cameras were used. You see this one says CR3 at the top. This was the Canon R5. It's a 45 megapixel camera, which means I can do that. Now I wait for it to load and render and you'll be able to see these people very clearly. You'll be able to see what's in the background that you couldn't see before, including the porta potties. But again, while I think this is these would make great individual shots, I wanted this. I wanted to be able to show off all of the effort and the wonderful work that was done. So we won't spend too much time on these guys. Uh, I used two cameras. I used, as I said, the Canon R5. I also used a Canon 60D, uh, which is my old uh, DSLR camera. The difference between the two were the lenses used. The uh, R5, I had a 24 to 105 millimeter lens. And you won't see a lot of bokeh here because I wanted to make sure that I was capturing the area. So I want things had to be in depth. However, you will see in some spots, like this uh, guy here, this was, you'll see the CR2 at the end of it. This was me using the 300 millimeter. I had a 100 or 70 to 300 millimeter lens on the uh, 60D. And that was so I could zoom in and get some up-close shots. Again, staying well away from the actual uh, reenactors, just so, well, for two reasons. One, it would keep me out of their way. And secondly, if I'm far enough away, I won't get, uh, I'll, I'll get more candid shots. I won't get staged shots. So let's go back out here. Down in the 200 range is when the um, event started. So you can see I went through all these shots, even got some pictures of the Carillon. If you haven't been out to see the Carillon, it is a beautiful boat. 
uh, that they'll take you out on the, the water with. Uh, this was again using the uh, 60D. But let's get to uh, the reason for tonight's live, which is to cull some pictures. So you'll notice I've gotten all these pictures And there were things going on all day. However, the actual ray doesn't start until we get down here to about the 200s. So let's start at 277. This was the colonials coming in and capturing the British, some of who were injured so you can see it a little better. And then the raiding party coming through. Again, using the uh, R5, I could get both the distance shots and then because of the number of megapixels, I could zoom in. Now, there is a problem when you do this. The shots were designed to be distance shots, so I could capture the entire environment. And I might have to cull something out like this here. Because when you're doing an event, sometimes you can't pick the exact perfect place to stand. Maybe somebody there already. There were hundreds of people uh, at this event. So, what this would allow me to do is pull in and see it myself, but if I were making a print up of it and I zoomed in too far, it would limit the size of the print I could make from that image. The reason for that is there's a thing known as dots per inch, and what they do is the more dots you have, the better the image looks. You'll notice certain things can get very pixelated when it gets very large, which I've shown in some of the other videos. So this is one of those cases where if you got too close, it would get very pixelated and the wall print that you made out of it wouldn't look as good as if you had uh, been closer to the subject. And you'll see a lot of places I've got two pictures. I have two pictures of the cannon here. I've got these two pictures of the guys lining up. I've got these pictures here. And you'll see why in a minute. As we move down here to the fight. So you can see that they're firing. So at this point, I held down the shutter. I've got one, two, three four, five. So now I got the second picture where the, um, I have a completely different look because I've got the, um, the smoke coming out of yet another gun muzzle. These were black powder rifles that were in use. And so I would go through and I would find one that I liked and it's a simple P, I'm using Lightroom, so it's a simple P on the keyboard to flag it as pick. And then I'll go back later and uh, work on it. So what we'll do next week is we'll go through these picks and make some modifications to them, clean them up. Um, retouching here is obviously different than retouching a person. A lot of the concepts are the same. A lot of the things that you're trying to capture are the same. But at the same time, there's uh, obvious differences in uh, what you're paying attention to and the color. Here we have another guy, a set of people getting ready to fire. So I start the shutter and bang. I have this wonderful image. Of not only the blast coming out of the muzzle, but you can see that uh, smoke came out from the flint hitting the steel uh, and 
firing off the little bit of gunpowder that they have that they use as the, what we'll call it, the fuse. And if we go in a little deeper here, you see you get them marching. They're on the roof, so I'm running and gunning. I've got the two cameras, so I can swap from camera to camera without having to change the lens. Another downside to changing lenses outside is you can get things inside the lens. And by having the two cameras, uh, I have a rig that has the camera on each side, allows me to quickly shoot from one to the other. Now here's a good uh, picture of them marching. And you can get a really good look at everybody, even though the picture was taken from a distance. But we get down here to where they're firing. And you'll see why I like to leave the shutter open when they're firing. So you can see, I, I can see they're getting ready to fire here. Still getting ready, ready, bang. And right there. I got the start of the firing. You can see how much flame came out around this one. You can see the smoke coming up from here that had fired off. But this captured the moment that the ignition began. And now you can see that th that same soldier, the flaming's going around, but you've got the smoke coming out of the muzzle of the gun. So what I did was capture that exact moment before the uh, bullet would have come out of the gun. And to me, that's an awful lot like doing a picture, uh, a portrait. You can have people sit in one spot. Again, like I said, that doesn't look natural. We aren't mannequins. We move. Uh, that's our, our, our normal state, I think, is, is constant motion. So I take the same approach when I'm doing a bodybuilder. You keep moving through the poses, I'll keep taking the pictures. Um, I'll leave it open so that we get things like you've closed your eyes. The next shot, your eyes will be open. So it takes care of blinking. It takes care of some inadvertent things that, that can happen. And as you can see, we've got some images here where we have the them firing. And it becomes an issue of do I really like what I'm seeing? And I don't because what this basically did here is the uh, fire from the gun just basically occludes these guys way too much. I don't, I want to see them. Here I've got a guy reloading his, his uh, musket. So. And now we're back to the 60D. The images aren't in the correct order for the reason that uh, the file names were um, different. And because of the difference in file names, they aren't in chronological order. Uh, the ones from the 60D just kind of fell in. Uh, up here you can see the size of the image, 5,184 by 3456, and the uh, R5 is 8192 by 5464. So this is a 20 megapixel uh, camera. I use this with a zoom on it because you won't be able to zoom in as cleanly on a 20 megapixel as you can on a 45. You'll lose detail. But you can see them continuing through, 
It was a wonderful event. Um, if you get the chance to get up to uh, Ticonderoga, I uh, highly recommend um, stopping by, and uh, especially when they have an event going on. You can see the crowd of people that was uh, standing out in the in the shady spot here so that they could see them firing off a cannon. And all the cameras and the cell phones and everything. It was just a wonderful event. Um, next week we will go through these images a little bit further and we'll deal with the um, what retouching would be done what pictures were kept, what pictures were thrown away, and we'll take a look at what retouching looks like on an event. I hope you found this uh, educational, and I will see you guys next week.